Well, hello, you've caught me again. Cheers. What day is it? We're on lockdown. They're all the same, aren't they? Not really. Cheers, you're very good health. For those of you that might remember, I opened a prayer at some time ago. It's good value for money. It's this one. It's really, really good. Um, the reason I'm drinking that is because it's going into this lovely dish. Now, um, I'll talk to you about inspiration in a minute, but um, I watched recently a film called Julie and Julia, which is based on the life um, and times of Julia Childs, who, um, as you may know, if you're a foodie, you'll know who it is. If you don't, she was a great cook that actually brought French cooking to the masses. Um, and she made this boeuf bourguignon, which is a beef stew, but um, it's, it's really elegant. So I'm going to do my little version of that. So I'm going to dive straight in because there's lots of things to do. It actually takes four hours to actually cook this. So I'm going to do the most, about, the most of it and talk about it, and then the rest you'll see plated. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we've got... Um, I got some um, bacon, whole nice bacon, and um, I've taken the rind off, and I've kept that because I'm going to use that, and I've cut it into lardons, and what I'm going to do is that's going to be the basis start of the, um, the boeuf bourguignon, but first of all I'm actually going to, um, if those of you that remember me doing this last time, put it in some boiling water first before we fry. And why do we do that? We do that because... It actually makes it really crispy when it comes comes to the frying bit. Okay, so that's only going to have a few minutes in there. So I do need a pan now on, ready for that to go in. So there are several stages. The, the bacon lardons are fried off, which will create the, uh, the oil. We're then going to brown the meat. Now the meat... Um, I've actually left quite, quite big chunky pieces and I've had it sitting between uh, several pieces of paper towel to dry it because when you're browning meat, if it's not dry, as Julia would say, it won't brown. So that's browning nicely, under, uh, that's dried nicely under there. I should take that one away. Yes, yeah, so, so um, it's about the fourth time I've actually watched the film. And it's very nostalgic. I mean, she was in the, what was it, 1950s? Um, she bought cooking to the masses via television. It took her years, over eight years, I think, to actually write the book. Um, how, I can't even remember what it, what it called. How to Master French Cooking, or something like that. But it was, me it was meant for um, English and American housewives that didn't have servants. Funny that. How many of you don't have servants? Yeah, okay. Um, and the story is actual, uh, this story is actually a wonderful story of how she uh, got into it because she, she wasn't a chef. She couldn't even boil an egg when she started. Um, but um, she got into it because she moved to Paris and she wanted something to do. And she loved to eat. That was the important thing. She loved to eat. So do many of us. Okay. So I'm just going to put that on a little bit of paper towel. Just to dry that off a little bit. And then in that goes. Now that's going to produce its own oil. So you don't really need to add any oil at this moment, that's great. So yeah, so Julia. So Julie was a housewife in New York that um, was in a telesales job and wanted something 
of the, that to do uh, that was important. She latched on to Julia Child and she decided to actually take the 500 and something recipes in Julia Child's book and do them in a blog over a year. And the whole film is based on that. Emotional and it's just wonderful, a wonderful film. So please, please watch it. So this is a little beef stew like you've probably never seen before, really. I'm adding a little olive oil there. Okay, so the idea is to get the, uh, the, uh, the, the lardons uh, a little bit crispy, cooked and crispy. We're then going to take those out. And we're going to start um, browning the beef. This is why it takes so long to, uh, to do this recipe and do it really, really well. And the whole story in the film is quite, uh, quite a beautiful story, how she starts to get notoriety for doing her blog. <coughs> and a food writer wants to bring somebody and she makes it and she falls asleep and she burns it and then she has to make it again and then it was torrential rain and they didn't come. Yeah, shit happens in life. You can go through all this effort, pour your passion into all these things and then people don't show. I'd show for a beef ball meal. Which is why I'm making it tonight. And I'm actually going to, um, beef ball meal is basically a stew with beef, um, red wine, uh, bacon lardons, onions. I'm going to use some cows, mushrooms, some thyme, red wine and a little bit of stock. Um, and you could eat it with, I don't know, potatoes, or you could eat it with uh, a nice crusty bread, would be beautiful. I'm actually going to make dumplings, because it's that kind of weather. Now, those of you that know how to make dumplings, the old-fashioned way, at all right. Uh, shredded suet, and it comes in a uh, vegetable one as well, but I love the beef one. I'm sorry I do. Um, half the amount of suet to flour. And if you're not using self-raising flour, use some baking powder or levadura in Spain. In Spain. And then a little bit of milk, uh, no, a little bit of water, sorry, just enough to bind it together. Pinch of salt. Basically, that's your, your, your dumpling mixture. About, bring it all together in your hand, and it should be of a doughy consistency, but formable in your hands, and you put them into little balls and drop them into your stew. I'm gonna be doing that later. I'm going to take the lardons out. I'm not going to put it on ba uh, baking powder because if there's any oil coming out, I'm going to want that oil later on. See, some things take a long time. I didn't think this one through. I've prepared a load of stuff so I didn't have to do it in front of the camera. The oven's also on, preheating at about two, um, 250 degrees. Okay, so that bacon is now actually cooked to how I want it, nice and crispy and got some colour. I put the pan back on, now we're going to brown the meat in the oil produced from the bacon. Now don't put too much in any one go, otherwise browning turns to stewing. And the whole point of this is to brown the meat. And you need to brown it all over. So it takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time. And thyme is one of the herbs that we're using today. And I've actually, I've actually got this thyme from my terrace upstairs. Absolutely lovely. Why do we brown meat? If you don't know, look it up, because in stuff like this, it's important. Even if you're doing a steak actually at home, brown, browning it, sealing it first is so, so important. Give it that sear. What else does browning do? Browning creates caramelization of juices. 
as we're using the same pan, we're going to build up all that concentrate of juices all in the one pan, and then we're going to stew in the oven. I'm so tempted to eat one of those bacon bits, but I won't. Now you do want this browned all over, so you have to turn it, which is why I left it in fairly big chunks, so it's easier to turn. Do you know what I love? I love cooking so so much. This this is my idea of heaven. I'm sure it's some people's idea of hell, or why the hell is he doing that? But this is my idea of heaven, and if you don't get it, you don't get it, and that's fine. So the next time you go out to a nice restaurant and you have the most delicious dish you've ever, ever tasted, someone stood there for hours doing it. Okay, so it's got some colour. It's not cooked, but it's got some colour. So we take that out and we put the next lot in. I've got two bits left, I'm going to squeeze them in. put the electric fan on it might sound a bit but it's okay I'm actually noticing a lot more people on uh, Facebook now they're actually doing food and putting recipes on good good for you share the love at the end of the day food is love share it unfortunately I live alone so usually the love stays with me um, as to my uh, my dear friends in the West Country, um, yeah, I will cook you this next time I see you, I promise. Every time I cook something, I always get a message going, oh, you never cook that for me when I'm there. You know who I mean. So. Of course, what's interesting is, because this is a bit of a long video, well, it's only 12 minutes. I feel like I've been talking forever. I've only been talking 12 minutes. It'll be interesting to see who actually stays to watch this. Okay, so we're browning the meat, and as soon as that is done, we keep taking it to one side. In the same pan, I'm going to put the onions, chopped onions, and carrots, okay? Now, these aren't going to be served in the, the dish, but they are used in the cooking process to produce flavours and caramelise and just add depth. Got any idea what I'm talking about? No. I would love to have someone in my life that actually could sh I could share this with. And um, I would love to have a kitchen that was big enough to have a big open plan island so we could sit around there in the evening and drink a glass of wine or two and um, talk about the day and also talk about the food. And whilst you sat at the island, you also get to smell these incredible flavours. Right, so that is browning a tree. Amazing! Now the reason I'm putting it on the same dish as the bacon is because, ow, oh, that's hot, it's going back into the dish at the same time as the bacon, so it's fine. Okay, so into that. I'm going to put a little bit more oil, just a tiny bit. I'm 
going to put the onions and the carrots. I'm going to turn it down a bit because I don't want them to burn. What they all, all, all do is um, all those juices caramelised on the bottom of the pan from the bacon and the meat, the, uh, the moisture in the carrots and the onions will start to now to release those caramelised flavours. Science, it's amazing. This is why going out to nice places costs a lot of money. I actually want to cook those until they're, they're starting to soften, okay? Now, meanwhile, we're going to cook the onions. Okay, so. Just going to wipe that pan. There we go. So we're going to cook the onions. Now, traditionally, beef bourguignon has little tiny silver skin onions. Um, and although I keep saying, you know, this is France and you can, uh, this is France, it's not France, this is Spain. Uh, I was thinking France because of beef bourguignon. And that's where Julie Charles was when she... Um, yeah, the silver skin onions, I thought, well, I'm never going to find them here in Sidious. So I went and got um, shallots, because roasted shallots are also really, really nice. But wouldn't you just believe it? Uh, in the last shot, I was actually looking for parsley. Because um, um, thyme and parsley and bay leaves are other herbs. And I always usually find big bunches of parsley. Do you think I could tonight? Could I buggery? I can't say that. It's not a children's program, it's fine. Um, so I ended up with um, a bag of chopped parsley and I'd already bought the shallots, so that's fine. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put some butter and some oil in the pan. And one of the things Julia was always fond of was butter. French love to cook with butter. A little t helpful tip, if you add oil to butter, it helps keep the burning uh, down. And if you clarify it, it's even better. For those of you that don't know what clarified butter is, if you put a, um, a whole bar of butter in a pan over a very very low heat and just let it melt not cook you'll see it separate like the clear liquid and the the whey if you scoop off the the the, 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 the scum you're left with the clear butter and that's clarified okay so into the uh, oil and butter I'm going to add the onions and I'm just going to cook those gently until they're brown okay Right, meanwhile, the carrots and the onions in here are absolutely, they're fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to return the meat and the bacon. Oh my God. I am in heaven. And my oven top's just gone off. So I'm just stirring around all those, veg those, those onions and uh, carrots with the bacon and the beef. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add some flour. Yes, flour. Just enough to create a coating. On the beef. A 
I'll tell you more about this in a moment. So just enough to create a coating on the beef. Then, turn that off. In the preheated oven, I'm going to put that just for four minutes. I haven't got my watch on. <laughs> four minutes, that's 24. Okay. Um, so the flour is now going to cook into the juices that was in that um, uh, pan and um, absorb and create a crust. I'm going to cook it for four minutes, give it a stir and then cook it for four more. Meanwhile these onions are browning nicely. Remembering they are going to go into the, uh, the Biff Bourguignon towards the end. So the idea is to create some colour and some flavour. And to, to do the flavour, we're adding, um, it's just butter and oil at the moment. Then I'm going to add my thyme and a bay leaf. I'm also going to add some stock, some beef stock, which I made earlier. Always have things prepared, like beef stock. This is such a nice wine. So the uh, the recipe actually calls for something like a Pinot Noir, a uh, red wine Pinot Noir, uh, but something that's got a bit of uh, force with it, I think. Not too much, but a bit of force. Um, but this, um, I couldn't find a Pinot Noir this evening. Uh, but this is um, Ganache which is um, it's quite local here and it has got some body but it's not too heavy and for a priorat it's quite light so I'm actually going to use that okay so the onions are just starting to get some colour so I'm going to add the herbs now I'm going to put in the stems as well just going to break them up a little bit I'm going to add the stock, just enough to cover. They're going to cook for about 30 minutes. I want all that liquid to reduce right down. That's amazing. How are we doing on minutes? One more minute to go, no problem. Now then. I could talk about the mushrooms. The mushrooms, yes. Because the mushrooms are a separate entity. Again, mushrooms. You can slice them. I've used little button mushrooms. So I've just halved them. So again, we're using butter and oil. And the thing about mushrooms is they absorb all the... Uh, the oil first and then they start to brown and as Julia would always uh, say never crowd the mushrooms so apart from browning the uh, the meat she had a thing for mushrooms as well don't overcrowd your mushrooms because uh, you start to stew them instead of browning them now I haven't got that many and it's a big pan so they are not going to be overcrowded so just make sure they're coated in the butter and oil. I'm just going to let those brown. It's nice and simple. Those onions and that thyme smell unbelievable. Okay, four minutes is up. Oven mitt. Mm -mm -mm. So that's coming out. I'm going to give that a stir. Oh my god, that's so, so beautiful. It looks nothing at the moment. Four more minutes is 28. So what we're actually doing is uh, we're almost baking a crust onto the beef. Baking the crust onto the beef with that flour and the juices, the caramelised juices. 
Then what we're actually going to do in four more minutes, I'm going to take that out, I'm going to add red wine, I'm going to add stock, and then um, we're going to uh, put that back in the oven. These onions and mushrooms are for later. So what we're actually going to do is, try not to let the mushrooms burn. When this comes out, I'll tell you. I've got time, I've got wine. And dishes like this are actually great because it's cold outside. The evenings are drawing in. Blah, blah, blah. Comfort food. <clears throat> the, uh, at the end of the film, Julie, Julia, she, um, Julie, Julie goes to see the, uh, the exhibition of Julia Childs at the Smithsonian um, Museum and there's the actual um, uh, remake of her kitchen because she was a very tall woman all the counters had to be raised um, but uh, because she did everything with butter um, there were some very special moments taking photos and enjoying the, the, obvious, uh, the exhibition but she tells her husband to go away and then she takes a pack of butter out of her bag and she puts it it's very emotional okay so this is what I mean by giving mushrooms some color okay amazing I'm gonna turn that off off Went round again, that's lovely. Okay, so I would go over what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some more white wine, red wine in there. White wine, red wine. So in a moment, we're gonna take out the, the, the pork and from the oven. I'm going to add red wine and some beef stock. That's going to release all those crusted caramelized juices and it's gonna form a gravy, a sauce, okay? I'm then going to put that back in the oven and that's going to cook for another, I don't know, two and a half, maybe three hours. Because you want all that beef to be so, so tender. Love me tender, love me do, never let me go. Right, okay, so that is done. Now... Red wine. And it's beef bourguignon. You want red wine. You want a lot of red wine. But I also want some beef stock. And you want enough to cover the meat. I'm getting so excited about this. I mean, Traditionally, you would use this in a proper um, uh, casserole dish that you could serve at the table. It would be very, very countryfied. Beautiful. So, I put the, uh, the wine and stock into that. Now, I'm actually going to put some tomato paste. Because this adds ooh, depth and flavour. Not touching the handle because that's just come out of the oven. Ouch, that just burnt my hand. You could actually put the tomato paste with the flour and um, give it the eight minutes with roasting the crust of tomato and flour. You could do that, actually. But I've done it this way, because this is how Julia did it. Okay, I'm also now going to add whole cloves of garlic. I put three in, Wayne. Three cloves of garlic. It's a beef stew you won't eat. All right, and I'm also going to put my thyme in. And a bay leaf. Let 
those onions are actually reducing down lovely. Okay, so. Now that is going back in the oven, covered for a couple of hours. Lovely. <coughs> I keep doing that because I've got a little timer at the top there. Okay, so. When, when, that is, uh, when that is ready, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the beef. I'm going to strain the sauce from the onions and carrots and push them through a strainer. I'm then going to add the beef back to the sauce with some fresh carrots, because I like fresh carrots a little bit al dente. I'm then going to add the mushrooms and the onions. I'm going to put it back into the oven to finish it off. Um, and in between time, I'm going to make some dumplings, which I will sit on the top, and they're going to soak up some of that juice. Oh my God, I'm dribbling. Yeah. So that's basic, basically beef bourguignon, and I get inspiration from. I get inspiration from every, every everywhere. I mean, beef stew is one of the things I always remember from home. My mum always used to make the most amazing beef stew. It was in the huge pot with dumplings and it used to last us for two days. My sister, myself and my mum. Um, and the onions have gone out. I hate Spanish wiring. That really hurt my finger. Um, yeah, so I have early memories of beef stew and what it meant to me. And that's why it's a comfort food. So. As I've progressed and I've expanded my palate and my experience in the kitchen, whatever, um, to be able to go from beef stew, which is great, to something like creating a beef boeuf, boeuf bourguignon, uh, which is a little um, few steps up, um, is quite, quite marvellous, really. And I get so much passion out of doing it. Um, you might call me silly for getting so excited about doing this but I do because I'm the one who stood here looking at it smelling it watching how it's caramelizing or reducing or thickening or browning and and I'm gonna eat it all later well actually I've got to save some for Kelly because she's gonna be home later so that's fine so um, I'm gonna leave you there oh this was the this was the uh, the bacon that I bought earlier as you can see, it was a complete block. Um, and I've actually, when I took the, the, the rind off, I you see all the lines, I've salted it. I'm actually going to do something with that later. Um, so I'm going to leave you there. So tonight's dinner, when it arrives in another two and a half, three hours, I'm going to be so hungry, but it's going to be so, so worth it. I wish you very good health. Keep safe. We're still on a partial lockdown here. So whatever you're doing, uh, look after yourselves, look after your loved ones, be responsible and uh, speak soon. 33 minutes. I've got this thing about 33 in my life. 33 minutes that, amazing. Cheers.